colorful hair, but we know him as, well, a new 2022-23 all-rookie second teamer. He got 20 or 66 points total, not during the season, but in terms of votes. So Jeremy Sohan, the 11th player in the Spurs franchise to receive all-rookie honors and first Spur since Kawhi Leonard back in 2011. So Sohan joins Detroit center Jalen Duran, Houston Rockets forward Tariq Erson, uh, Eason, Pistons guard Jaden Ivey, and Rockets forward Jabari Smith on the Kia NBA All-Rookie Second Team. Remember, we've highlighted Jeremy throughout the season. He's been phenomenal, great defensive player. He also, at one point, does the, the one-handed free throws, but that's neither here nor there. 11 points, more than five rebounds, two assists, 26 minutes played in 56 games. All right, speaking of the NBA, here we go. Back to this, a player and an owner. Denver Nuggets center and MVP Nikola Jokic fined $25,000 for this inappropriate contact with the Suns owner Matt Ishbia in Game 4 of the Western Conference Semifinals. Oh, Jokic went to grab the ball from Matt Ishbia. He shoved him with his forearm, knocked the owner to his seat. Jokic asked if he's worried about punishment, and he fired back. What about his safety? Mm -hmm. So, but his hands on me, so I'm, they're not going to protect me. They're going to protect the fan. I mean, no, not me, not me as a person, but I'm talking about as a player. Yeah. I mean, they can do whatever, of course, they don't care, but I think they're supposed to protect players. I love that he only referred to the current owner of the Suns as a fan. Regardless, not suspended, he's going to play in Game 5. Nuggets host the Suns, that series, like this very competitive NBA postseason, tied at 2-2. Speaking of the postseason, Eastern Conference semifinals, Heat defeat the Knicks 109-101 to yesterday. Now they lead that series 3-1. Miami can close out the series tomorrow night in the Big Apple. All right, so from the court to the course, local college golfers Cameron Cadillon and Alex Giles, they are representing the Big 2-1-0 in the NCAA San Antonio Regional, hosted by UTSA and San Antonio Sports. So after 18 holes yesterday, Cam tied for third place at one under par, 71. Started on the back nine, got into some trouble in the par four, 10th hole, her first, but she had a great up and down from the green side bunker, saving par. And we asked the roadrunner how she did that. Oh, that felt good. I think that really helped momentum. Off the first tee, I was, of course, I was excited, so I did overturn one a little bit, but I knew that I wasn't going to be in trouble, so that was good. And then the second shot, I hit a good shot. It just didn't, the wind held it up, and then that um, out of the bunker, I just knew that if I put it, like, in inside 10 feet, I felt confident that I was going to make it. At least I gave myself a chance, and then when I rolled that in, it was icing on the cake and I was like all right let's go after I got off that green I actually told my coach I was like all right full, first hole's over I don't even care what happens now let's just go I can much have having fun so that was good and that felt good to get get rolling get it going on the first hole all right let's go Cam closing with 12 pars in a row leading the field with 15 through the first 18 holes all right and UIW senior Alex Giles paired with Cam and a golfer from Long Beach State Alex needed two shots to find the green on the par four 10th hole measuring 395 yards she would put it in from here look at that beautiful she carded a seven over 79 great score on the TPC San Antonio Oaks course remember that is home of the VTO the Valero Texas Open so we asked her what she needed to do better in the next round yeah, definitely around the greens. I struggled with my chipping and pitching and putting, especially on the back nine. Uh, my pace putting was was not good, but now there's a lot of room for improvement, so I'm excited for tomorrow. All right, so second round tee times are set. Cam and Alex teed off at 8.55 a.m. Cam from the first hole, Alex on number 10, each paired with two more golfers. This is the 54-hole regional. I got to say, Everything they're doing is so impressive. I wish I played golf earlier on in life. Do you play? Uh, badly. Okay. Yeah. I always, when people ask me, I'm always like, define play. I yeah. go out there from time to time. I embarrass myself. My husband yeah. used to teach golf. Oh. So I'm sure he's a scratch golfer himself. He is. All right. A woman finds herself lost on foot in the Australian wilderness. The two things she survived on for days. And hey, you teased it earlier, Mother's Day just around the corner, get ready. We're checking in with SA Live, what you can do to make the moms in your life pleasant Mother's Day. Do you have plans already? 
Not yet. Okay. New today at five, free money. I take that for Mother's Day. If you had an unlimited data plan with an AT&T plan, you could soon be do some cash. It's all part of a big class action lawsuit settlement. Same goes if you had a Facebook account in the last 16 years, which is like all of us. Mm -hmm. The companies are paying customers who qualify. Coming up at five, 12 in your size, Marilyn Morris is going to tell you how to claim your cash. Well, welcome back. A U.S. Army sergeant convicted of killing and shooting an army, an armed protester during a Black Lives Matter march in Austin could now face up to life in prison. But that's going to be up for the court to decide today. Daniel Perry convicted back in April. Now, this stems from an incident back in 2020. Now, 28 year old Garrett Foster legally carrying a rifle in downtown Austin during a march. Perry was working as a ride share driver the night of the shooting. He said he had acted in self-defense. Witnesses testified they didn't see Foster raise his weapon. Governor Greg Abbott has already pushed the Texas Board of Pardons and Paroles to recommend that they pardon Perry. The Louisiana man now facing charges after deputies say he shot a 14-year-old girl in the back of the head while she was playing hide-and-seek. Sheriff's office says a group of children were playing in the area, some hiding on it David Doyle's property. Doyle telling deputies that he saw shadows outside. He shot at people running away. One of those, one of those bullets hitting a 14-year-old girl. She is at a local hospital right now. They say she should recover. Doyle now being charged with aggravated assault and battery. The parents of the young woman who was killed in Wyoming back in 2021, fighting to get a letter written to the man who allegedly killed her. Gabby Petito was found one month after her boyfriend's body was located in Florida. He had committed suicide, but Petito's family thinks his run from the law was aided by his parents and evidence of that may be in a letter that his mom wrote to him. They're asking a Florida judge to order the mother of Brian Laundrie to turn over that letter, which was found with his body. Her parents claiming references in the letter, quote, baking a cake with a shiv in it should her son go to prison. They also say it references bringing a shovel to help bury a body. Laundry's parents want to stop that letter from being turned over. A woman's claim that former President Donald Trump attacked her and defamed her now in the hands of a jury. That panel considering E. Jean Carroll's allegations that Trump raped her in a New York City department store dressing room back in 1996. She says he then defamed her when he denied the allegations. Trump does not face the possibility of prison time in this case. Instead, if a jury believes Carroll's account, they would award her monetary damages only. Well, today, President Joe Biden and congressional leaders set to meet to discuss the nation's debt ceiling. Republicans pushing spending cuts before agreeing to even I the idea of raising the debt limit. Meanwhile, the White House, they don't want to negotiate cuts as a condition for lifting the limit. As ABC's Justin Finch explains, today's meeting comes amid growing concerns that the country, America, could default on the debts as soon as June 1st. All eyes on the White House, where President Biden is hosting an Oval Office conference with the top four Senate and House leaders focused on raising the debt ceiling. That shows uh, that the president wants to bring them together to have this conversation. The president has been very clear. This is Congress constitutional duty to take action, to not default. The White House refusing to call today's meeting a negotiation and still insisting Congress raise the debt ceiling without any preconditions. But House Republicans are insisting there will be no deal without spending cuts, already passing a bill calling for nearly $5 trillion in cuts. And yesterday, 43 Republican senators signed a letter saying they would block any bill allowing a clean debt hike. Republicans are very united at this point to say, we should look at debt and deficit and to say, what are we going to do to slow down our spending? Raising the debt limit covers spending the U.S. has already racked up, not future spending. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen cautioning Congress that the country could enter default in just a few weeks. All I want to say is that it's Congress's job to do this. If they fail to do it, we will have an economic and financial catastrophe that will be of our own making. A U.S. default could have wide-reaching impact, from collapsing the stock market to the loss of 8 million jobs, no Social Security checks for nearly 50 million seniors, and unpaid troops. 
Today's meeting is a step forward, but no major breakthroughs are expected, adding more pressure on the White House and Congress to strike a deal before that June 1st deadline. Justin Finch, ABC News at the White House. Taking a look outside with live cam. Keep your eyes on your weather app over the next couple of days because we are going to get, let's say, repeated hmm. opportunities for rain. Well, I'd, I'd say this is some of the best chances we've had in a long, long time, especially when it comes to some heavy rain by the time we get into the weekend. If you're up this morning, the lightning was pretty incredible. If you had an early morning commute, I want to show you a picture. This was out of Converse. And uh, lightning like this is always hard to catch, but this is well done. Uh, you can see it all kind of meets at the point there. Uh, at, at cloud to ground lightning meets at that uh, one point, but uh, pretty incredible uh, to catch that in a very beautiful scene uh, with the lightning this morning. And we had a beautiful sunrise to top it all off. So pretty cool stuff. We appreciate the picture as always. And I want to take you to the live radar and show you we still have our low spinning here. Really right over San Antonio, although it's getting stretched out some, but we have uh, light showers here around town. We still have that area of thunderstorms, albeit it's uh, a little weaker now, moving towards Uvalde. It's kind of sinking south. And then we have some new development trying to take shape there across parts of Blanco County, uh, the heaviest of the rain out towards Houston at this hour. Right now, cloudy here in San Antonio, 70 degrees. A few very light showers around. South southwesterly winds at about 5. And the forecast calls for temperatures to stay in the 70s today. A lot of cloud cover in with the rain. We're just not going to warm up a whole lot. 75 at 6 o'clock, 74, 7 p.m. We leave in a 60% chance of rain. Radar can get a little more active by the late afternoon and evening hours. And uh, we'll keep some decent rain chances through about midnight. It gets a little quieter tomorrow. And certainly as we get into Thursday, some quieter conditions before things pick back up in a big way over the weekend. We'll look at that forecast for you here in just a couple of minutes. Thank you, Justin. All right, a woman lost for five days in the remote Australian wild, finding a very unique way to survive. The two unlikely items she had in her car that kept her alive. Quirky baseball memorabilia now on sale, but the hot dog costumes do come with a beefy price tag. Well done. The Milwaukee Brewers have one of the strangest traditions in baseball. At home games, the fans dress in sausage costumes and then they race. So now the original costumes, they're up for sale. You can buy them. So the man who was in the brat costume on its inaugural run back in 1993, he's been hanging on to it for decades now. Also got the original Polish and Italian sausage costumes, but you can't buy them piecemeal you if you want them he's only willing to sell them together in a lot and the asking price oh. only 25 grand <sighs> this is on ebay mm. the owner says that he hopes whoever buys them wants to display them somewhere so the public can enjoy all right what a beautiful piece of art okay an australian woman survived five days in the wild on get this a bottle of wine and some lollipops. That is such, he was quizzing me what I would bring. Yeah. A rescue helicopter spotted the woman last Thursday, and she directed police to herself. She says while she was on vacation, she made a wrong turn. She ended up at a dead end. But when trying to turn her car around, the car got stuck in the mud. There was no cell phone service. She was only planning a short trip, so she only had a few snacks with her. Yeah, that bottle of wine she had bought for her mother. All right, she says she doesn't usually drink alcohol. Police say the woman was extremely relieved to see them. I can imagine why. She was treated at a local hospital. Really, the only injury she had, dehydration. A wine is not going to hydrate you. No, not for five days. No. All right, the Webb telescope is giving astronauts an up-close look at the first asteroid belt ever seen in our solar system. It's pretty cool. So to find it, they focus on a young, bright star located about 25 light years from the Earth and all the warm dust that encircles it. So take a look. The detailed image shows three massive rings of dust around the star, extending out 14 billion miles, or about 150 times the distance of the Earth from the sun. Those rings were likely created from the debris that was left behind as larger bodies, such as asteroids and comets, collided. Then the dust was shaped into belts by the gravitational influence of what the researchers are believing are actually hidden planets oh. that orbit this star. Very, very cool. So they say studying these dust belts can help unlock secrets behind how planetary systems form. Speaking of, you know, our scientists, Justin Horn, what do you think? Give us your insight. 
Well, they mentioned it was a young, bright star. I thought they were talking about Ursula. Aww. Aww. Mother's Day's next week. Oh, I'm on Yeah, you're good. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Gotta uh, love you, Justin. I try. I really do. I, <laughs> you go outside for you. You see the clouds, a little bit of rain out there. And uh, we're noticing some showers starting to pick up here to the south and west of town. Some of this is going to track into uh, San Antonio. So I think we'll get a little more activity here on the radar next few hours. We'll keep track of it for you. And we'll talk about a weekend forecast, which includes a lot of rain coming up. Welcome back. All right, so it has been a wild week for weather already, and it's only Tuesday. You know what? We were complaining last year around this time how hot it was and we weren't getting any rain. True, true. And that kept on for most of the year uh, into this year. It absolutely This true. is really the first rain we stretch of rain we've had that's amazing. We're talking years, honestly, since we've had a, just a really good soaking rainfall. And look, not everyone's going to get a, t a ton of rain this weekend, but it is looking promising for widespread good totals. And it has been a while since we've been able to talk about that. We're kind of seeing a general trend uh, change with this pattern, and it's uh, it's a good thing. Uh, let's first start with the radar, and we'll show you what's out there right now. Again, we have an upper level low that's over top of us. It's starting to kind of spin away, but as it does, it's uh, giving lift here kind of on the back side of you can see a little bit of a spin uh, perhaps right there and on the back side of it we're starting to get some showers and now some new development starting to take shape in parts of Medina County which by the way Medina County got some good rain yesterday and last night but starting to see this development around Divine and even southwestern parts of Bear County and some of this will work its way through so I do think we'll be in for a little bit more rain later this afternoon we're not done just quite yet and on top of that we have few little bands of showers trying to work through here on the northwest side. So some light rain from Hollywood Park down to Windcrest, Shirts, uh, down to I-10 and Converse, and then back down towards China Grove and even across downtown now starting to see some light rain redevelop. Uh, so uh, as we've been saying, keep the umbrella with you. You're still going to want it throughout the day and uh, maybe even into the evening hours. Uh, before all this kind of moves away, this low will eventually move north and take a lot of the lift with it. Uh, and we'll have a couple of quiet days before our next storm system moves in. We showed you this earlier, but we're showing again. Man, that is a beautiful shot out of uh, Converse this morning, looking east towards Atkins. And that was the kind of uh, kind of sky we were seeing with the, the lightning strikes this morning. There's quite a bit of them. And if we woke you up last night, we had some storms that came in around midnight as well. So it was active. It was active. And we uh, didn't pick up a ton of rain here in San Antonio. Uh, only about a tenth of an inch, but again, we may see a little bit more today. 70 right now, just reporting cloudy skies at the airport. South southwesterly winds at about 5. In our case, had 12-hour forecast, 40% chance at 2 o'clock, but we'll bring the rain chances up some this evening. Uh, 74 at 7 o'clock, 75, 6 p.m. We stay in the 70s today. I feel pretty confident of that just because of the cloud cover and that potential for rain. And I think our decent rain chances last until about midnight. And then as this low moves away, uh, we'll say goodbye, at least for a little bit, uh, to these uh, heavy showers and storms. Uh, here's a look at the big picture. And again, you can kind of see the swirl in the atmosphere. The slow is kind of getting stretched out. There may be another little swirl over here. But general idea, you got an area of low pressure, and this is starting to lift north. But it's on the back side of it that we may still get some development today. And here's a look at that forecast. It does show showers and storms kind of clustering around San Antonio. 3, 4, 5 o'clock, and then by 10 p.m., a nice little area of rain that uh, tries to drift east, and it's by tomorrow morning that rain chances generally go away. I can't rule out some isolated showers and storms tomorrow. And by the way, if we do see one, there is a risk for a strong storm or two tomorrow, but the coverage will be uh, far less than what we're looking at today. So again, that low moves north tomorrow. Then as we get into Thursday, pretty quiet day as well, but then we see a low develop to our south and west and that pulls in Saturday and that's when the models are indicating that we're going to see some pretty widespread good heavy rain. How much rain? Right now some of the models are spreading out anywhere from four to six inches, maybe even some higher totals in isolated spots. So this would be good, good rain. We can't guarantee that everyone's going to get that much rain, but uh, we're kind of in the bullseye for this. So again, it's promising and I think Friday into Saturday, maybe early Sunday. That's that time frame that we do need to watch, and we have to start 
using that terminology again, turn around, don't drown. We got to be careful with some of our low lying roadways and that uh, sort of stuff. So stuff we'll be uh, watching uh, as we get a little bit closer to the weekend and we'll be right back. All right, Ursula, you've been bringing it up throughout the morning. Mother's Day just around the corner. Okay, no galoshes, no raincoat, okay. no umbrella. These are all things that are off the list. We're setting the rules. So, guys, SA Live, what do you have? Recommendations? Let's hear it. Oh, yes, indeed. How about something We've got you covered. Mm -hmm. to pamper mom <laughs> and all skin good stuff like that? Yeah, Dara Hartman, owner of the Cormel Soap Company, is here. And you have simplified skincare, right? That's the goal. Okay. Right? So, couple of simple steps and we're going to make it really easy for you. And if you have maybe a d allergy or something like that, you customize things. Yep, if you're allergic to a certain ingredient, we can make something for you. Give us a call. Oh my gosh, so yes, yeah, look yeah. at that. Tailored just for you. All right, okay. Jen is on point with the children's ballet. That's right, they're getting ready for their big spring production, the Children's Ballet of San Antonio. Vanessa Besslow, the founder, joins me now. What do people need to know for this weekend? Majestic Theater, amazing Mother's Day weekend with a production you will never forget. Something magical for everybody, from the little ones to the oldest, and of course, the thriller of the Malefica Witch that will keep you in your toes. Perfect, they're getting ready for that. We're going to get a preview performance. All right, thank you, Jen. And speaking of kids, how about some uh, nice little crafts made by kids? Beth Light from Barney Handmade Market is here. Hi, we are going to have 11 kid vendors at BHM this weekend. They're so cute. And oh about six gosh. dozen more, all the grown up vendors as well. Lots of great stuff. Want to make something just for mom? Adina Anderson has this craft. Look how beautiful that is. Nice and simple. Okay, all that. Plus, we want to know what does mom want from other things? What do you want? I don't want to say. They should know. How will I know? <laughs> <laughs> they should know. <laughs> no, NSA Live case out on Facebook and Twitter. <laughs>